I want to talk a bit about Southport actually, uh, James Matthewson, uh, this has just been horrendous what has happened and interestingly of course uh, we've been talking a little bit earlier about the extension of those uh, of the custody of the suspect and uh, that can be up to 96 hours if you are suspected of murder which he is um, but in terms of the riots that happened last night James what is your reaction to that? Yeah, I mean, the trauma that was in that community anyway following those murders, absolutely unimaginable um, and unfathomable. To see that compounded now today, following those riots, the fear that was in the community, members of the community, a wide range of members of that community who've been voicing their fear across the media today, last night, the uncertainty, the stress, the pressure on the police force, who, the, you know, the same police officers who by the way, have just been processing and dealing with their own trauma after responding to these events, that local police force and the pressure on them. To see that compounded in this way, it's just the ugliest part of our life in Britain. And these people who come and travel, and by the way, they make a life out of this, these thugs. And we know them. They're the same ones who go to anywhere there's going to be a chance to have a scrap, to have a fight. They're the people who've been led along by likes of Tommy Robinson over the years, and they're, they're these these bigots who just look to try and enforce. And I even think their ideology, to some extent, is irrelevant. It's important to understand because obviously it is what it is. But they just want. Well, they're the same kind of people who are like football hooligans. You know, they're looking to cause violence. They're looking to get a thrill out of it. And they're looking and seeking to exploit and divide a community after it has just gone through an absolute tragedy. So for me, it's despicable. And I'm pleased to see Keir Starmer's comments. You know about the full weight of the law being being exercised but there's a huge political fallout about this people like nigel farage are now involved there's comments all over the place every mp condemning what's happened last night but um yeah it, it will be interesting to see how and where these divided lines fall in british politics after last night rob what do you think well i agree with everything that james said of course and uh, I think he mentioned Nigel Farage there, and I think it does have to be said we, we've grown perhaps dep depressingly used to far-right racist thugs in the English Defence League seeking to exploit a community's trauma for their own political ends. And of course, that's what happened last night. They steam in and they caused the, the riot that they did. I think what, what crossed the line today, though, is that we had an elected MP doing the same thing. Nigel Farage... The same thing? That's a very strong allegation to make, Rob. I'm going to make it, I'm afraid. OK. What did he say that he shouldn't do? Let me just ask the question, Rob. Yeah, well, he released a statement in which he deliberately cast doubt on the police's explanation, or that's the wrong word, the police's belief in what led to the appalling tragedy and the deaths of those three young girls. Um, and he deliberately stoked um, racist, um, uh, mistaken uh, uh, beliefs. I'm sure Nigel Farage would deny that, Rob. He, no, what he did, he knew what he did. He deliberately stoked conspiracy theories about what happened. He deliberately stoked the violence that followed. And Rob, I think I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna that. just. Sorry, Rob, I'm just gonna stop you there. You're, you're accusing Nigel Farage of something very, very serious, and I just want to make it very clear that I'm sure Nigel Farage, who is leader of Reform UK, would reject that uh, uh, suggestion it's from. It's big enough to hear from me that he deliberately stoked racist conspiracy theories. That is what he did. OK, Rob, that's your opinion, certainly, and we are the home of free speech. I'm sure Nigel Farage would deny that. Um, uh, James, what do you make of what Rob just said there? I think it's fascinating. Um, you know, I mean, Rob, Rob and me will not agree on a huge amount. You know, we're not here to, to give the same side of the coin. There will be differences in our politics, but it is so important that people across the political spectrum recognise, as Rob has just done, what Nigel Farage is doing, the game that he's playing, it's imported from America. It's the Donald Trump playbook. It's the way of dividing people and feeding conspiracy theories and misinformation that unfortunately circulates online. As to the identity of this attacker, what does the identity of a man who was murdered children have to do with anything to do with that murder? To use that in this aftermath when this community is going through unspeakable tragedy after what's happened, to use that for your own political advantage, it just shows you everything that the far right is about. And it shows you exactly where they're getting it from. They're getting it from Donald Trump. They're getting it from that kind of American brand of conspiracy theory that unfortunately we're seeing more and more used in British politics as well.